Microsoft just released Windows 11 build 22H2, but what's the big deal? And is it worth moving to that build if you can? Stay tuned and find out. All right, let's jump into this guys. Windows 11 IoT Enterprise, the GAC version, just had a new build release, build 22H2, which again, as most people know by now, that is the second half of 2022. It was launched on September 20th, 2022, and is now available. You can get with us, we can help you download it. We can help you get a product key. Um, and if you already have a product key for the Windows 11 IoT Enterprise, it will work with this build. You can simply just download this build and, and uh, install it as an update or an upgrade. And if you have a license for Windows 11 IoT Enterprise, you have the right to download this update or install this update. You can also install this update through Windows Update, or you can download the media kit and do a fresh install of Windows 11 build 22H2. This is the latest and greatest build of Windows 11 IoT Enterprise, and it's a full year in the making, lots of new updates. Now, what you'll find is most of the updates with build 22H2 are more consumer focused, more GUI interface, Things, a lot of changes around with the menu options, uh, around the control panel, around File Explorer, around the desktop. There are some neat little features and stuff that they did update with this product. They did listen to the uh, people um, and they incorporated a lot of changes into the interface that make it a little easier or what people are more used to doing with, with the product. Now, specifically on the IoT Enterprise and, and dealing with appliances, you know, how, what, what features in build 22 H2 are the ones I want to go to, you know, m most cases you want to first start with the roadmap because generally you're trying to move to that next build because the support window is much smaller than an LTSC version, which I'll just throw a, a, um, a note in there that the windows 11 IOT enterprise LTSC long-term service channel edition won't be out for another two years. So, uh, the last LTSC is a Windows 10 version, LTSC 2021. It's going to be at least a 2024, LTSC 2024 for the Windows 11 version. So as you look at the roadmap, right now there's currently only two builds of Windows 11 IoT Enterprise. Build uh, 21H2 from last year when it launched, and then this new 22H2 that just now launched right here in the middle in blue. So. The third one there is just to show you the, the roadmap in which case Microsoft will release another build of Windows 11 one year from now, and it will be called Build 23H2, unless they change the name again, right? So those are your support dates. And typically, you know, if you're on the 21H2, you have until uh, October of 2024 before you have to get off of it. So you still have plenty of time to stay on that one. But if you want to start looking at 22H2, um, some of my OEMs have to stay up on the latest and greatest, and they're always looking for, hey, when is that available? Can I get it? You can. It is available now. Your existing key will work. You can do an in-place upgrade, or you can do a fresh install. Um, and let's look at the OPK kits. So the OPK kits are available. Um, this is from Device Partner Center, and this shows you the kit numbers. And if you go out to the Software Order Center... Uh, we call it the SOC, Microsoft Software Order Center. That's where OEMs download the media. Um, or again, you can get with us here at Arrow. I can help you with the media kits oh, and give you a download option as well. But you'll see the first two numbers um, are uh, x86 and ARM. So you kind of you can ignore that middle the part about high end and value. That all has to do with the licensing, right? But for the the media, it's 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 for the product. It doesn't matter. It does matter if you're using it on an ARM or an x86, so you would obviously download the correct one for that case. And that is true. The, this product now supports ARM, so it does support the IMX8 ARM family. And um, I have another video on the uh, NXP ARM options that you can take a look. I'll put the link in the description. If you're interested in finding out why would I run Windows on an ARM, um, I wanted to know myself, and I've learned a lot over the past six months. Check out that video. And then you have the supplemental OPKs, which is typically your um, language packs. We call them LIPS, language interface pack, or your uh, feature on demand, features on demand. People ask me, what's a feature on demand? It, it Microsoft removes some of the features that just don't get used that often because they just were taking up too much disk space. And so 
the com features on demand. They're on a separate disk, and you can use some commands to put them back into the image uh, if you need those particular features. And you can easily just search on Microsoft Windows 11 features on demand list, and it will list what those features are. And I may do a video on that at some point. But those are your LPKs. Download those. Um, and let's get into the features that may or may not be that important for IoT. So let's look at some of these. One of them is support from what is known as Microsoft Pluton. And this is something very, very new. Um, it's basically, it's a security um, technology that is a system on a chip. So it's a little subsystem on a chip that's with a processor and it gives you an extra level of security. And this new build 22H2 supports that. So if you wanna learn more about Microsoft Pluton, I was just doing some searches on that as well. Smart app control, which is basically just uh, giving you the control over what apps actually run. Um, you may have seen this if you've ever downloaded an app that you weren't real knowing if it was trustworthy or not. And when you run it, it actually pops up and says, hey, this, this guy, this app, I, I would question whether you want to run this or not. And then it gives you an option to either run it or not. And you have some con more control over whether you allow people to run it or not. Um, those are two big features. There's an entire list at this link and I'm going to pop my browser up and let's take a look at the entire list and just scroll through real quick. So if you go out and look at what's new in Windows 11 version 22 H2, um, and you notice this doesn't say IoT Enterprise, and that's okay, uh, because the IoT Enterprise is based on full Windows 11 Enterprise. And so all of these features are going to be in the build as well. Again, a lot of it consumer focused, but the number one on the list is your Microsoft Pluton that we talked about briefly. Um, you have some enhanced phishing protection, which has to do with if, if, you, if a user starts to enter their password on a website that's not trustworthy, it's going to say, hey, I wouldn't put my password there and it would prevent that from happening. Smart app control, credential guard. A lot of these are security features to enhance the security of Windows 11. Um, personal data encryption, stickers for Windows 11 SE, um, which is a student edition, um, basically, you know, education market space. Then you have the Windows Update notifications. You can now block user notifications during active hours. There's some additional controls around the Windows Update and the notifications. Improvements to Task Manager accessibility. Um, and then there's some more references here that you can dive a little bit deeper into those features. So go out and have a look at those additional features. But for Windows IoT, not a huge number of features there and no reason to jump for support to the next build, but certainly you want to get out there and start playing with it and testing it. Because again, these updates are leading toward a Windows 11 LTSC edition in a couple of years. And with that, I would say, leave me a comment, ask me some questions, try to get uh, some answers to these questions. I appreciate you guys watching the videos. Have a good evening.